Mark showed you some of those slides, and we're not talking about all quartzites, right? We're talking about the sandstone that becomes an intermediate or a quartzitic sandstone. Some of those stones don't get enough heat and pressure to fully form. So in order for those to be marketable, what do we do? We add resin, all right? We add resin in the block, we can vacuum bag them. Um, they're also acid washed to get any of the uh, ferrous material that's out of there because what do your clients want? White, gray, white, gray, gray, white, right? They want the same thing. They don't want the orange earth tones. So as you do these, they will fill any pits or holes, the resin, but it doesn't all get filled. There are areas in there that still have voids. And we'll get into those pictures, you know, and again, your suppliers, we didn't say this on Tuesday, but all these quartzites are not the same and different suppliers are able to supply, usually from Brazil, different grades. Unfortunately, you don't know what the problem is sometimes until post-fabrication and it's already in the home and that's when your phone rings. But they're also uh, acid wash and then dry. This is a, a, a slab oven. Um, there's no one here selling slab ovens. These are customized things. But after you've resined them, you're having to get the moisture out of them. So this is where they do it. Um, and they're mesh backed. If you look at the mesh, remember uh, some of your mosaics would just have a mesh back, but most of these have a complete fiberglass back. So what do we do on a six sided piece of stone when we mesh the back of it? Completely cut off all ventilation from one side of it. And sometimes that's not just an entry point, that's an exit point for moisture. So again, uh, after it's resin, acid washed, dried, etc. And so that resin does provide a number of benefits. It does yes. give us a, a nicer surface finish. It fills some of those surface voids. It does add some bit of strength in holding, mm -hmm. bonding some of those looser minerals together. The fill is going to fill in those voids. Uh, most of them, when it first came out, again, most of these intermediate quartzites, it's very new to this industry. We have, they haven't been in there for decades. You know, sometimes when we get these new, new stones that are created, we don't know what's going to happen, right? But also, uh, we're starting to change the surfaces. Now, who are doing uh, bush hammered, leathered? So what happens when you take a piece of material and you resin, you make it strong, and then you beat it with metal? You, you loosen it all back up again. So certain finishes of certain stones may react differently. And this slide's meant to give you some ideas on how to prepare yourself just in selling the challenges that you should plan to encounter in fabrication. We talked about it being hard, very scratch resistant. It's gonna be hard on your tooling and machinery as well. It's gonna be slower to cut, slower to process. It's gonna um, eat up more of your tooling or, or wear your tooling down faster. Um, so one of the recommendations is to make sure you're covering your cost if, when you deal with these materials. Um, and for those buying and specifying, make sure your client understands that there may be a higher price tag to fabricate and install these very, very hard to cut, hard to process quartzite. And the whole reason we're getting here is because it does have an affinity to soak up moisture. Um, and we're gonna talk about the types of quartzites that you can expect to see that occur. Um, we wanna make sure that you're pricing yourselves correctly. So we're all in business to make money. And if, if you're pricing it the same as you would a soft marble or a easy to cut manufactured material, um, you, there's a potential to lose money or not make the profit you expected if you, it'll really slow down your shop. And so to identify the problem, where is it going to occur? Um, some of these problems can occur before fabrication when moisture gets in it. That's a good thing. If, if the slab already shows problems, pick another one. Uh, sometimes these will happen during fabrication. I've seen them up to nine months post install. So. 90 days have gone by, 120 days have gone by, you haven't got a call from your customer, and all of a sudden you don't even remember that customer because you're so busy, and they send you pictures. The one thing you're gonna hear us say over and over again is time. So in your fabrication schedule, if you're doing granite, marble, man-made materials and quartzites, you need to let the builder, the client, the specifier know that you need extra time. I, have, I know fabricators that refuse to cut quartzite anymore because they've gotten so frustrated. That's not really what we want. But you need to know, understand that you need extra time. If it's summer, sunny, winter, cloudy, if you live in the north, the south, geology, or geography, I'm sorry, it can make a difference. So let the stone dry out. And don't give yourself a schedule because next Thursday the client wants the quartzite installed. You're going to have problems. 
And so you talk about the acid bath. That's one of the things they're doing. So these are generally going to be the, the quartzites that we hear about issues occurring on tend to be the, the whites or lighter color, light grays. Generally not the Taj Mahal or Madre Perla, those more beigey. Those tend to be further along in that metamorphosis, metamorphosis process where they're more tightly fused together, less absorbent. But these whites and grays also undergo an acid bath process in Brazil at most of the factories Scott mentioned. The reason being, in amongst that beautiful white quartz, there's also a natural occurring um, ferrous mineral, iron. Uh, what does iron do? It rusts, it turns yellow, it turns orange. Um, so they try to remove as much as that as possible before they resonate or before it's finished so that it doesn't have that affinity to turn orange. We'll see lots of cool photos of some of these things that happen in the field when that's not done correctly. The other point a friend of mine made, one of my Brazilian friends that has a geologist on staff here at the show, made was that not all factories are the same in where this material is coming from, mostly from Brazil. Some of them apply resin with a hand squeegee and, and air cured. Some of them have fully formed vacuum lines yeah. and drawing it in there. Um, and some of them are very open and forthcoming about the resins and the processes they use. And so one of the points he wanted me to make sure we, we hammer home is make sure who you're buying from, your supply chain, make sure they're honest and open with what's happening to that slab before it gets to you, what products are being used, what's involved in their resining, the seal, or any additives or chemicals used in that process. The more honest ones, the more advanced ones are going to be really open about that process because they're getting the calls too. They're hearing about this material after the fact. I'm going to fly through these.